Here's a quick random repair for you. I have a Bell receiver here, 9241 PVR. Oh, there it goes. Just rebooted. We got uh, rebooting issues, uh, possibly unable to locate satellites, uh, really slow startup. Yeah, see, we just rebooted here. All kinds of problems. This is a Bell 9241, but also Dish Network's the same. I'm gonna show you how to fix this with a few basic tools. Well, fix most of these problems with a few basic tools. This one was just um, taken from the trash, so it may have a bill attached to it or something, but when I saw it and it was a 9241 sitting in the dumpster, I knew exactly why it was in there, because they all do this. These things are garbage. And uh, I'm gonna quickly show you how to fix. I hey, don't mind my mess of a workbench here. This model has four screws in the back. One, two, three, four, Phillips slide forward. I haven't even opened this thing yet, so you're in for just as much of a surprise as I am, and I don't even know if I can fix this thing. But we will soon find out. Oh yeah, very typical. This one is quite a bit different <clears throat> architecture inside to what I'm used to. In these, but still fairly common. A lot of times you'll see the power cord and power supply board will be over on this side. Um, I can already see the problem here, and I'm not going to go into big, unless it has a removable bottom, which it does not. I'm not going to go into really big, uh, crazy repair mode here to show you exactly how to do it, but I'll show you roughly what you're going to need to do and show you that it can come back online. Now, first of all, um, there's a transistor here, uh, diode, and a really large filter cap. Be careful if they've just been plugged in because they'll store a lot of voltage. On some of the units, if you have no visible bulging caps at all, a lot of times this power supply or the solders on this chip could be the issue. Uh, so if nothing else is visible, these are pretty inexpensive if you order them online. You can give it a try if you're if if you're uh, brave enough, because I'm sure if you're just uh, tinkering with this at home, you don't have the um, tools or whatever to test a capacitor like this, which be, which would be an ESR meter. So the ones I've seen though, is if you have a little removable card here as a power supply, often the big cap, even if it doesn't look bad, is bad. But I can already see the problem in this one. Like I said, I pulled it out of a dumpster, I opened the lid. Um, I'm gonna have to check to make sure the account's not flagged or anything that I can actually activate it. Um, but here's the issue back here in the tuner section, particularly, and where the uh, chips are for the satellite. Right now I'm noticing, and by the main, one of the main processors, the caps are bulged and no good. Now I see four here. If you look closely here, you can see the top of this is not flat. Sometimes you'll see they'll actually ooze out. This one's beginning to ooze out. But none of these caps are flat. So this one here will definitely be a cause for concern because that's what's gonna be keep preventing it from booting. This one, this one, this one, and this one will cause signal strength issues because <clears throat> they're in the actual tuner section. Everything else looks pretty okay with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace those capacitors. Um, there is five of them, and normally with five, I would take this main board out, but I'm gonna do a really quick, dirty, show you how this works, see if I can get this back online by doing a, a quick fix. I'm gonna show you how that's done. Um, it looks like this cage to get this out is a pain, so I'm going to try to service this one bulging cap right from under this hard drive. Yeah, because if, if I'm looking at this here, there's screws going into here. This is a particular model I actually haven't worked on, um, but I've worked on quite a few and it's always the same problems. They're just, these things are built like garbage. So, I will show you how to fix it. Now here's one of the capacitors here. You can see it has a slight bulge on the top and that's what you're looking for. Sometimes it's just slight. You could probably see it's slightly bulged. But now look at the bottom. More substantial bulge. So this one, I just bend them back and forth till they break off. <clears throat> I know a lot of you probably wanna reach through the YouTube now and smack me for that. Um, but like I said, don't care about this receiver. Don't know if it's locked, trying to show you something. Um, Desoldering a, a capacitor is fairly easy. Uh, I recommend you just watch a video quickly on how to replace a capacitor. This on these caps with the line on the side, that indicates you're negative. So if you look down, where the capacitors go, one side is marked positive. 
and one side's white on these boards. The positive side will be the side without the line. So I'm gonna solder these on the surface. Uh, you can do that if you're very careful and you sort of kind of know what you're doing. I'll show you quickly how I do it uh, when I fix these. And I've fixed a dozen of these. Um, like I said, they're crap. Now this one I'm about to solder in here, just waiting for my iron to heat up sideways is the one I pulled out here. It's probably the one causing the boot failure. And these ones would be causing potentially signal loss failure, but they may not even be having an issue right now, but I'm gonna change them because they are bulged. I'm gonna try th that right now. It is a good idea to, if you actually want one of these receivers to last, is to recap them all, but there are a lot of capacitors on it. And I just sort of, um, when I'm working with these, I just sort of uh, do a repair to get by, because who knows, you may not want satellite TV in three years or two years or however long it's it's gonna last. This this repair with just replacing the bad ones could last a while. I do recommend though, if you, uh, if you are doing a few of these ones to replace this large one here, because sometimes they fail without bulging and re-solder the, the uh, any any solder points on the chips nearby. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Sorry for anyone offended by me doing this. There we go, broke it right off. Now I'm left with a clean place to solder. Okay, so there it is. This cap is not so bulged on the bottom, but quite bulged on the top. And it's toast. Like, um, I put these... Uh, a couple of these on my ESR meter and they are in fact toast. I tested a few around them and they're okay. <clears throat> so I have just a cheap ESR meter, but it works well in these small caps. So now what we're going to do is take the replacement cap, which can be higher in voltage, but you want roughly the same in microfarads. This is a Nichicon, it's a better capacitor than these no-name ones. <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim the leads short and I'm going to solder it on kind of sideways and uh, being very careful not to bridge any solder joints use a very small soldering iron and i'm going to just uh, go ahead and solder that capacitor on there okay so i've got the four soldered on you can see kind of how i do it and you got to make sure you don't make those globs too big because this stuff's small and if you make the globs too big you'll you'll bridge it to another circuit and the whole thing will blow up and it'll be garbage so i've changed these four they're laying down and they're they're tough they're on there pretty good so they're not actually going anywhere um, even for a hack repair but in all you know, full disclosure, underneath this fan that I just re reefed up, because I don't even take the front faceplate off, that's how much I don't care about this one. I see a blown capacitor here, and I put my ESR meter on it, sure enough, it's no good. Um, my ESR meter only reads up to uh, 1,000 microfarads, and um, this one's at like 200, it's supposed to be 1,200, but you can see through here, it is in fact bulged and it's the only other one. So I just bent this bracket up. I'm gonna change this one too. Then I'm gonna quickly pop the lid back on this cause I don't care. I'm gonna plug it in and I'm gonna show you if it works. And I'm going to do it right on the camera. If it doesn't work, well then, you know, dumpster dive, who cares? If it does work, well, home run, they have a working receiver. Well, let's go try it out. Oh, one more thing, I'm sorry. Uh, when you're doing this, uh, you may have to take some brackets and pieces out to check all the capacitors. And if they are not totally flat or slightly concaved, if there's any like, you know, slight bulge in them, they're probably toast. Uh, they're pretty easy to read because, again, the parts they use in these are, are awful. Here we go. Power my TV on here. <clears throat> and I have not tested this. I have no idea. I don't even think my remote works on this one, but I'm not sure. It certainly wouldn't before when it was rebooting. I had a screen for a moment and then it flicked out. So I'm just gonna plug this in here. Sorry, I have to keep uh, stopping the video because my phone is totally completely dead and I'm just using this to make this video. But as you can see, it's downloading right now. No crash yet. Um, it took about 30 seconds to a minute for something to come up and I was a bit hasty so I push and hold the reset, uh, which I shouldn't have had to do. It's probably already reset, but either way it's going again. I'm gonna quickly run check switch and just make sure it's easy my switch. And um, this is a screen though it would not get to before at all. Um, I tried for quite some time. Um, you know, I just wanted to see how flaky it really was. Cause sometimes when these capacitors start to go, they begin to become a little bit flaky. And then when they go completely, they're just like, they're a total extra flake. But this thing was bad, really, really bad. So um, yeah, I'll show you what happens when I run check switch. Totally working. Holy crap. Another one fixed. That was 
pretty easy. Hold on here. Oh, no, no, I did that. Done. Uh, okay, let's see here. What did they have recorded? Oh. Well, they got nothing here. They got nothing recorded. What are they? Unable to acquire a guide. Oh, downloading guide. Okay, I'll bring you back on when this guide's done downloading. So it just did a full download. Let's try this again here. Guide. Oh! Holy shit. Look at that. Yikes, there's not an awful lot. I don't know what I have available. Oh, this thing's totally deactivated, which I figured it would be. Hope this helps somebody uh, with your problem and your bell receiver. And again, this is like if you have a PVR, uh, HD receiver, any of them really, they all suffer from the same problem and uh, on Bell and on Dish Network. So here we go, working. Later.